Okay, our final speaker for this session uh, will be Dr. Christian Kreutzer, the Chief of Congenital Heart Surgery, Hospital Universitario or Universitario Austro in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and he'll be speaking about lymphatics in Fonte and Kreutzer, commandeering the other vasculature. So, thank you very much. It's really a pleasure for me to be here today, especially after the, the quality of the lectures. It's gonna be hard for me to keep up with those fantastic lectures that we have today. So, I have no disclosures. Okay, here you are. I have no disclosures, except that probably the title of the talk, Commandering, is kind of <laughs> difficult. I, I don't feel that I like a commander of the lymphatics yet. Probably it will get, I will get there, but certainly not yet. And actually, I will present to you a lot of failures today. So if you embark in this task, I hope you don't repeat it. So I have to disclose something too, that I'm a part of this fantastic group of people. There is uh, Victor Hraska, Viveke Yortel, you have Dori from top, and myself, that we call ourselves the Lymphomaniacs. And we have several, we have had several meetings through the last six or seven years, and many of the concepts that I'm going to present to you today were developed by the four of us. So single ventricle lesions in 2023 have now with the modern forms of the fontaine creutzer circulation, the lateral tunnel, the extracardiac conduit have a more than a 25 year follow up. And it's representing a great triumph of congenital heart surgery because it is allowing survival of 90% of 30 years for the most complex forms of congenital heart defect. So this is really something. The quality of life is reasonable and we obviously are very concerned at the rate of 10 to 20% fontaine Kreutzer failure at 25 years. But of course, when we talk about fontaine Kreutzer failure, please exclude residual lesions. Those are our failure. Those are failure in management. A pulmonary branch stenosis is a failure in management. A, um, a subaortic stenosis in a fontaine patient laid, laid in a late follow-up, it's our failure. So, that is not Fontaine's failure or Fontaine Kreutzer failure. So there are always two forms in which present that we, we can have three forms that we can have the Fontaine Kreutzer system failure or the ventricular failure, but sometimes you have a combination of those. So pre preventing late failure is the new challenge. A lymphatic system and circulation are key players in failure. So, and why the lymphatics are key players in failure? Because the Fontaine circulation operates up at or above the functional limits of the lymphatic circulations. We have increased lymph lymphatic production by increased central venous pressure, and lymph drainage is also compromised. There's no diastole to produce a sac of lymph into the systemic vein that has the normal biventricular circulation. The central venous pressure, as I said, is high, and we know by experiments done in the, in the 90s that there is complete cessation of thoracic that flow, thoracic that flow at the pressure of 20 to 25 millimeters of mercury. So we have a stasis in the thoracic duct that produces thoracic duct dilatation, tortuosity, valve incompetence. There are valves in every, every three millimeters in the thoracic duct. And of course, the central lymphatics start to have a failure of pumping. But lymph is still finding the way. So early after the Fontan, we have the early lymph complications, there are pleural effusion, chylothorax, pulmonary lymphatic edema, and ascites. Those are the typical ones. And the late complications, there are effusion, ascites, PLE, prostobronchitis. These are the tip of the icebergs. But the problem is that we have chronic tissue lymphedema. Because while we tend to notice that patients are having PLE or PB, below that, lymphedema is producing a cascade of unfortunate events that eventually will end up in every organ fibrosis. And this is not only happening in the liver, it's also happening in the heart. As Tarek showed us, macaural fibrosis, diastolic dysfunction, elevated stiffness are present in the Fontan circulation, and there is this pro-fibrotic milieu of augmented MMP and TIMMP. So this is happening in every single part of the human body. 
And there's a huge improvement in the way that we can evaluate lymphatics, where the development of T2 MRI central lymphatics uh, lymphography. This is a non-contrast sequence of magnetic resonance imaging that has a high affinity for aqueous fluids. So we can see central lymphatics, and, and we can actually classify in single ventricle lesions in uh, four types according to the progressive of abnormalities. Type one, with clearly or no abnormalities. Type two, abnormalities in the supraclavicular region. Type three, abnormalities extending to the mediastinum. And type four, abnormalities extending in the whole thing. And actually, we can see here a very important element that is the thoracic duct. The tortuosity and the diameter in the thoracic duct are also key indicators of how the lymphatic system is functioning. And with these lymphatic complications to start, well, this paper from our friends in CHOP, that in which they perform uh, T2 MRI pre-Fontan in every single Fontan completion, and they noticed that patients with high-grade lymphatic abnormalities had six times greater odds of developing early complications. So there was, in this uh, patient population, there was increased length of stays and chest tube drainage in type three, and there was increased mortality and takedown in type four, suggesting that the patients that have an abnormal or exhausted lymphatic circulation are going to do poorly after the Fontan Kreutzer. So why not restore a long normal lymphatic drainage? Well, that actually means decompress the lymphatic system for patients that are going to be subjected to the high central venous pressure that produces a Fontan Kreutzer. And actually, that is trying to put all the, the uh, lymphatic drainage into the low pressure left atrium that has the low, diast the low diastolic pressure, the, the low end diastolic pressure, and has inspiration to enhance the lymphatic drainage. And this is how it looks from the venous side, from the venous catheterization, this is an injection on the left arm. You see a wide pain and osmosis. This is the nominate vein. And you see some flow going up. That is a good sign. That means that you're not getting the compression from the right side. You can have a lot of shunting from the right jugular vein up to the transverse sinus, going to the left, and then you will have cyanosis. So this is a, a good result. And if you see here on the left, this is uh, uh, a lymphography doing by transgastric uh, puncture of the cisterna chile, and you see contrast going all the way up into the um, thoracic duct. And you will see here, in a, you see this smoke here, that is the thoracic duct draining into the nominate vein, and you see contrast getting in here in the left atrium. So there was really some this was really amazing in one of the patients that we treated that there is a lot of flow here, as you can see. So the indications now for this Kraska procedure, Victor Kraska working in Germany, was the first who applied the concept of thoracic duct decompression to the uh, single ventricle palliation. We well, can use it concomitant to the Fontan Kreutzer for high risk patients, patients that are showing an exhausted lymphatic system in, by T2 MRI lymphagectasias type 3 and type 4. Uh, for early failure, for patients that have an intractable ascites by the thorax early after Fontan. And the technique for, uh, and also obviously for failing Fontan with PV, plastic bronchitis, PLE, and effusions. The technique for the Hraska procedure is the direct anominate vein with thoracic, uh, uh, with the thoracic duct here, turned down to the left atrial appendage. And there are very important things if you're going to do this procedure. It's going to be very important to analyze the anatomy of the left atrial appendage. The CT angio is performed when if left atrial appendage is not clearly seen in the MRI, you need a, an, an, a big left atrial appendage to do a wide anastomosis. Um, because you, you, what you will need is a white patent anastomosis with a low risk of thrombosis. If there is a long distance between the nominate vein and the left atrium, well, you can use a ring PTFE graft dunked in the LA cavity, uh, or if there's the diminutive left 
atrial appendage. Then you have to go to the right and ring the PTFE, uh, and, and the ringed PTFE uh, graft should be done in the right atrium. So, but I'm gonna tell you later that it's probably not a good idea. So, since 2017, all Fontans that, all Fontan Kreutzers that are performing in my institution are subjected to a pre-Fontan MRI, um, MRI lymphatic screening by T2 imaging. So 38 patients were included in cohort. The diagnosis included the typical forms of hypoplastic left heart syndrome. We had performed the MRI analysis. We classified it according to the CHOP classification, and we defined two pathways of treatment. Group A, that encompasses 26 patients underwent a classic extracardiac fenestrated Fontan Kreutzer, and group, and group B, types three and four, those with the higher abnormalities, underwent the extracardiac conduit with the innominate vein turned down or Hraska. The innominate vein turned down procedures were performed by direct anastomosis or by conduit interposition. There was an early, one early mortality in group A, and there was one innominate vein turned down thrombosis and occlusion in group B. There was, interestingly, less volume of effusions in the patient that had a lymph a lymphatic decompression. So that actually was one of the most important uh, optimistic factors that we had. The ICU guys were absolutely amazed that we were able to take the tubes out much, uh, much faster in the group B. So the follow-up now has a medium of, of 30 months. The patency of the nominate vein turned down as assessed, was assessed by ECHO, CT, or ANGIO in 12 survivors, but we have four complete occlusions, all of them with PTFA conduits. So I don't think with those results that PT, using PTFA conduits for these uh, small uh, low-flow um, systems or anastomosis is going to work. There were no PLE of plastic bronchitis. There was one late death in the lymphatic decompression group from progressive right pulmonary vein stenosis. There were no difference between groups in survival, oxygen saturation in, that was func uh, almost exactly the same, and functional status. But I gotta show you a failure. Now it's a patient that is four years old and is doing well. He's a hypoplast atrial atresia, aortic atresia, mitral atresia, status post in our hospital, the Norwood, as a at the bidirectional gland at five months, complicated by hylothorax. And we know that hylothorax is a risk factor for failure, for late failure. Three years of age, free fontan cath, normal PA pressure and end diastolic pressure, good PA anatomy, multiple, multiple collaterals were embolized. A prefontan T2 MRI showed type four abnormalities. So he underwent a fontan completion with the nominated vein turned down, an event for procedure extubated in the OR, chest tube removed in the third postoperative of the days, such in the low 80s. So everything was happiness until in the sixth postoperative day prior to the charge, suns went suddenly up and the patient started with shortness of breath and we have to put the, the chest tubes back on and start leaking like crazy. 180, one, the second day 450, 780. It was clearly, it was easily to notice this left cervical venous ingurgitation. So we took the patient to the OR, see normal Fontan pathway and pressures, but we, if I can have the video on. Oh wait. Can I hand be on? Oh, sorry for that. Oh, there it is. I got you. You see this is complete occlusion by thrombus. So in this case, the remedy was obviously worse than the disease. So we obviously did this, this procedure, uh, and we, uh, we, what we noticed in the revision that we noticed as the left atrial appendage had a neck, so it, the left atrial appendage was big enough to allow us to do the anastomosis, but, but it had a, a in the, in the middle of the body of the left appendix. So pay attention to the anatomy, another very important thing. So the patient was discharged, 
and he's doing very well one year after that in CT angio, this complete occlusion of the PTFA conduit. And obviously, the patient was in oral anticoagulation. So what is the criteria for failing Fontan with PLE and, and, and effusions? Well, at least the patient must have preserved or mildly depressed single ventricle function and normal end diastolic pressure. The thoracic duct has to be patent, and of course, the cervical veins as well. Ideally, it should be to the left. A right thoracic duct with the right gland requires conduit interposition. The rationale of this procedure is restore normal lymphatic drainage, but once the leak is present, once we have PLE or plastic bronchitis, probably it won't stop after decompression. And the reason is because donor pressure is around eight millimeters of mercury and can be negative at some times. And for plastic bronchitis, airway pressure is negative, so I cannot compete to, with, to air, negative airway pressure with a pressure in the left or right atrium of around eight millimeters of mercury. And we reserve the lymphatic intervention in the country as our friends in top. We always perform the lymphatic intervention secondary to the thoracic decompression, that is embolization of non-lymphatic collaterals for plastic bronchitis or embolization of lymphatic collaterals for PLE. And we have experience in four patients with PLE. The first patient was a five-year-old that had two years after the Fontaine presented with a massive ascites and PLE and, and massive effusions. So we the patient had bilateral SVC, we performed the right gland takedown and AV valve replacement. The, the albumin levels uh, went up, improved. Unfortunately, this patient uh, suffered from uh, late death for acute pulmonary or hemorrhage at six months of follow-up. Another patient with heterotaxis syndrome that had all, all of these patients have CHOP type three abnormalities. Nine years after the Fontaine presented with acidis, presented with effusion, and the one at Hraska with extra conduit change. He's alive, working normally at five years of follow-up with normal avenue. This is really a success. A patient with 53 years old with transcapital atresia performed by Billy. That is a real Kreutzer procedure. Um, 36 years after the Fontaine presented with massive ascites, PLE, no effusions. She underwent the Fontaine conversion, Anna Hraska, had normal albumin. Unfortunately, this patient died two, two years after the procedure for fulminant hepatitis. And the last patient is one, is one of the patients that I want to, to present you as a case report. It's a mitral atresia, double outer right ventricle, 15 years after Fontaine, presented with ascites, effusions, PLE, obviously, and underwent a Hraska and an extra cardiac conduit change. So she is a status post atrial septectomy and a banding as a neonate by directional gland at eight months, extracardiac conduit Fontan Kreutzer at 16 months, at three years of age with a 16 millimeter conduit. He had normal RV function and mild TR, restricted atrial septum. So by 11 years of age, I presented this restricted atrial septum, so underwent four surgery, atrial septectomy at, at another institution, no conduit change, good recovery, normal albumin. 17 years, when she was 17 years old, two years ago, Ascites and PLE relapse, chronic diarrhea, very low albumin catheterization. We found small extra cardiac conduit with a discrepancy of IVC 26 millimeter conduit 14, normal Fontan pressures 13, normal end diastolic pressure 7, normal PE anatomy, in T2 MRI, she was a top type 3 with a thoracic duct of 6 millimeters in, in diameter that's very dilated with severe tortuosity. So fifth astronomy, extra cardiac conduit to 22 in nominate vein turned down, an eventful recovery, discharge, discharge home on seventh postoperative day, oral anticoagulations. Three months, three months later, albumin levels were improved. We were very happy. But this patient presented episodes of anxiety. She was mentally unstable. And we had questions about the adherence to medical, the, the, the oral medications intake. So six months later, severe diarrhea leaking 1.5 liters a day. She was readmitted on cath. And as you, as you can hear, the anastomosis is wide, but it's full of thrombus. So we take, obviously, she was treated by a stent, but uh, in tandem stents, as you can see here, and we were able to regain. And, and look how this vein is decompressing and he, she, that vein is completely disappears after the 
the anastomosis is, uh, is patent again. So again, after CAD, an eventful recovery, discharge, huge improvement of symptoms, albumin levels were improving. Again, same thing, severe diarrhea, and now the patient is having Fontan pathway thrombosis and innominate vein thrombosis. So six thrombectomy, redo innominate vein turned down, Fontan pathway thrombectomy, now PLE relapsed, embolization percutaneous two times, and now she is listed for heart transplantation. This is our experience with plastic bronchitis that is quite positive. It's only two cases that both of them are alive, and one necessitated, one needed, I'm sorry, a cath intervention to embolization of lymphatic collaterals, and the other patients did not, and he's alive and well two years after the, the, the compression. For intractable, intractable effusions, they have experience of three patients. Uh, one patient that was 14 years after Fontan had ascites, and it was very, very, and, and even though his cath, uh, his um, catheterization in the measurements were okay, she, he continued to have ascites all the time. He was very distressful for the patient, so he underwent a Hraska and extra cardiac conduit change. He had a conduit of 18, but of course, we, if, since we opened the chest, we decided just to change the conduit. So this patient is alive and is completely asymptomatic, and he does much, much improvement of ascites. The second patient is a patient that presented initially to, to it, it, we did a, a, a T2 MRI prefontan, and he had a type 2. But soon after the Fontan, he was presenting with intractable effusions. And we took it to the cath lab, the, everything was quite well, but we did a new MRI and now he was type four. So his lymphatic system was reacting very badly to the new circulation. So he underwent a Hraska and he obviously he, the, the, the ventricular, um, the, in, a, in a condition after 14 days of ECMO, he was presented ventricular dysfunction and this patient ended up dying in the hospital. And the third patient is a patient that was done at another institution, four months he was on a ventilator, four months after the Fontan, never got out of the ventilator after the procedure. He had massive ascites, he got pleural effusion, he was leaking between the ascites and the pleural effusions around 800 milliliters per day. So he only had the water hraska, and this page, this is a check ray pre and post hraska. This is, looks like magic, but it worked perfectly in this patient. The patient was discharged on a tracheostomy and unfortunately died of viral pneumonia two years later. So prophylactic lymphatic decompression is possible at Fontan completion. The results are promising for patients that are presenting and already exhausted of abnormal lymphatic system. We don't know if we're gonna ameliorate fibrosis or reduce the lymphatic complication with this approach. For late lymphatic failure, our motto is first restore normal drainage, then intervention, then percutaneous interve intervention. For early Fontan creutzfeldt lymphatic failure, effusions or, or ascites, it might have a role, I'm sorry. Thrombosis and occlusion is the villain here. The nominate vein turned down must be perfect. This anastomosis must be perfect. So much hair has to, we have to pay attention a lot more to anatomy, especially the anatomy of the left atrial appendage. The anticoagulation must be stricter than expected and probably PTFA conduits are a bad idea in this situation. And of course, you need a multidisciplinary team for diagnosis by, by MRI, understanding by cardiac catheterization, the unique philosophy, physiology by lymphatic catheterization, I'm sorry, of the lymphatic circulation. Thank you very much.